Our first speaker is Wen Rui Hao uh, from Penn State University, and he'll talk about homotopy training algorithms for neural networks and some pattern formation. Okay. Yeah, thank you, John, for the introduction and also the invitation. Yeah, so um, in my talk, I want to, uh, because this is a, a workshop for algebraic geometry and machine learning, so uh, specifically, I want to use some tools in numerical algebraic geometry to tackle the problem is a, a neural network. And the first one I want to see, um, there is a, a training actually we can use is a, a homotopy continuation tool, which is very powerful tool in numerical algebraic geometry to train the neural network. And the second one I want to apply uh, pattern formation, which is a highly nonlinear system. So there are many uh, methods uh, arise from uh, numerical algebraic geometry to solve it. But uh, in this talk, I want to use the neural network to see if we can learn different patterns if we don't know anything about this system. Okay. And uh, first I, I give you a, a quick uh, view for uh, what's the home topic continuation. You may know this is, a, uh, this is a basic stuff, it's a very powerful. It's a, how if you want to solve a polynomial system f of x, I don't know anything about f of x, but I, I know the exact form I want to solve. I just uh, uh, construct this uh, homotopy function. So f of x I want to solve, but I put a j of x, I know all the rules. So then I just track the each solution path from t equals one to zero because that's a linear combination of two system. Then eventually I can solve all the, uh, all the uh, solutions for f of x equals zero. So this is a basic uh, home topic continuation in numerical algebraic geometry. Uh, if you don't know, I just refer you to this uh, famous Bettini pay, uh, uh, book. You can uh, learn all the details. So this is how you solve a, a polynomial system. Actually, we, we can also use this a, a same idea to solve an optimization problem. Okay, so for instance, let me start with a very simple uh, fitting example. So I want to fit y equals sine two pi x, okay? So if we start with a, also a simple model, it's a linear model, you only have um, it's two parameters, how you solve it? So this is, uh, um, you uh, formulate this uh, uh, least square problem, then you, you, you want to minimize A and B, and uh, by minimizing this uh, distance uh, between zero and one, and as small as possible. Then it turns out uh, you have an analytical solution, right? So you just uh, um, have a different test function because here you have a linear model, so you just uh, test the x i equals zero or one is a, a constant term and a, a linear term, then you can solve in the b, right? So you form a two by two matrix, you solve it. You, you, we can consider this a analytical solution. So how about if this is a linear model, so how about you go to a more complex nonlinear, okay? So you, you have exponential ax equals b, you may say, okay, I can take a log, you still make a linear model, but uh, so far let's uh, keep the non-linearity non in the mimic. We don't know this uh, non-linear model. How can we start with a linear model to solve this uh, non-linear model? Okay. So then, and similarly, uh, actually you can also do everything like this, right? But uh, here you don't know what's the test function you should apply. Then I, I Instead of doing that, I just uh, have this uh, you I, I define a new model, hybrid model. Is the t is a homotopy parameter? Is a linear combination? You have linear model for t equals one, and the t equals zero. You have nonlinear model. Okay. So similarly, you uh, you have this optimization problem is the same. You have your model. You minimize the L2 distance, then you solve it in the b. But here is a very interesting. You have another. Uh, is a, a parametric problem. You have a t is a homotopy parameter. But uh, when t equals one, you already know all the solutions. You, you find the two by two matrix, you have analytic solution. The thing you are interested in is t equals, uh, equals zero, okay? So what we can do is we solve this optimization problem for different t. Is t equals one, you already know. You decrease the t, for instance, t equals 0 0.9, then keep going and then you can solve everything, okay? So here is, a, for instance, this is a t equals one, you have 
straight line, and then eventually t equals zero, you have black black line. Okay, so this is how you you push the t, then you solve all the solutions. So if you uh, take a look at uh, is uh, uh, in another word is uh, a and b are both a function of t. So that means I can track the t and then eventually find in the b from one t from one to zero. Okay, so this is the idea is the homotopy. Okay, so actually you can have a general homotopy setup. T equals one is your linear model. T equals uh, zero is any nonlinear model you have. Okay, so this is a theta is a, is a, your parameter and the b. Okay. So then what you, you want to minimize this uh, your uh, hybrid or homotopy uh, model to any function, okay? So in this case, the theta is a function of t, okay? So when you, um, or you can review a different uh, perspective or you, you, if you like a, a polynomial system or the nonlinear system of nonlinear equations, you can write on the necessary condition. You want to minimize this one, or you you want to find the roots for necessary condition. The first the gradient equals zero. Okay, so for instance, you you use a gradient descent. You solve this gradient equation equals zero, but you have a homotopy parameter t over here. So how you solve it? So you either differentiate this one with respect to t, you rewrite into an ODE system, right? So this is an ODE system, t, theta equals one is your initial condition is obtained from your linear regression. And uh, you, um, you uh, propagate the uh, t, then you eventually you find the theta equals zero. So this is a, actually the homotopy is a equivalent to a um, uh, dynamical system. So you can, or you can uh, think about another way is uh, how you solve this one is uh, you, you solve the Newton's method or you can just uh, uh, solve this uh, gradient uh, descent method that you have a gradient flow. So it's uh, eventually is the uh, uh, same equivalent. Okay, so um, I give you another idea. This is a very uh, nonlinear setup. You have sigma and a, and but uh, still, um, I want to fit this one. It's a Gaussian distribution. I start with ax equals b. So I want to go to a quadratic. Okay, so even you have quadratic in this case, you can specify c equals zero, you can solve a and b, and then eventually you put a c over here. Okay, so this is a, uh, when you, uh, uh, yellow line is uh, uh, t equals one, then t equals zero, you can find this uh, nonlinear non -linear fitting. Okay, in the same time, you can also track the t from one to zero. So this is a, maybe the linear model is not very good, you can see. The when the uh, t equals one is very flat. When t equals zero, you have this is a change is so dramatic. But uh, still, when you track the t, you can still find the uh, root or solution. But uh, when you close the t equals zero, you have to track the t very carefully. Okay, so this is uh, involve some adaptive tracking sometimes. Okay, so this uh, um, I go to the polynomial interpolation. So if I start with uh, linear model. So for instance, I go to the quadratic term. So this is, a, is equivalent to the proximal optimization. So this is actually when you uh, simplify, you only apply the homotopy with, with respect to C. So when uh, C, you, first you put a C equals zero, okay? You, you give the constraint C equals zero, then you just remove this constraint, you solve C. So in another word, you can just uh, optimize uh, uh, A and B first, then you update C. So this is a, uh, eventually is a very popular optimization method is a proximal optimization, okay. So based on this is a several example, I can tell you is the homotopy, uh, what, what did it do? Actually is regularize the complex uh, landscaping. So if you have a nonlinear model, so that means the homotopy landscaping is very complex, okay? So the idea of a homotopy, why don't we start a very, uh, uh, very, very good landscaping? So that means that you can think of as the convex optimization. So then I change the solution landscaping when I track the T in the meantime. Eventually, I start with here, I know the solution. When I change the uh, T, the landscaping is also changing. Eventually I can convert to uh, whatever I want to solve, 
Okay, so this is one example. Or you can think about the more uh, non-convex optimization. I start with the convex one, you have one solution and then you track the uh, T and then eventually you also add the, uh, this is a, uh, makes the model more com complex and then eventually you can converge to T equals zero. So this is the idea. So can we uh, use this idea to a neural network? So this is a, uh, I uh, have this idea is a homotopy training. What we are doing is always start with simple. I go uh, start with a linear regression. So you have W1 and the beta one is your, um, your two uh, parameters you don't know. And the X and the Y, X is your input and Y is your output, okay? So if you have a bunch of data X and the Y, so eventually I can fit this the function F of X. This is my model, this model is very simple, which is a linear model. So I can solve it it's very easily or you can, find the analytical uh, formula to, to find what's the W1 and the beta one. Okay, once I solve the W1 and the beta one, I just put out two parameters uh, here. So this is a two parameter, one is the W2, the other one is beta two. But I also put another constraint, I uh, force W2 equals identity and the beta two equals zero. So from, based on this constraint, you can see this is uh, two, even you put uh, more parameters, uh, the same, right? So you, you still only have W1 and the beta one is your parameter, which is solved by linear regression. Okay, so then I just, uh, so from here you can see this guy is very close to the um, neural network with uh, one hidden layer, right? So I just put an activation function over here to find the neural network. Then the eventually, so I have this uh, a uh, home topic function. So the t equals one is your linear regression and the t equals zero is a neural network with a, uh, one a hidden layer. So you can see this is a linear combination. So why this is a, um, you, you construct a home topic like this? If the in the ReLU network, it's very makes sense. If you re have ReLU network, you can think about this is a, in the, here you still have activation function, but you have identity. But this is a sigma is a relu. What we are doing for this homotopy setup actually, if the t equals one is a linear identity, okay? If the t equals zero is your relu. Actually, when you apply this homotopy, you means you, you know, what you are doing is apply homotopy to the slope of the upper part, okay? This is the t equals one. This is a become leaky relu. Then eventually you become relu. So this is the when you track the t then you can solve, uh, um, solve this uh, ReLU network. So this is the, you can see from the uh, zero hidden layer to one hidden layer. Actually, you can also add the nodes, okay? So here, before we, what we are doing, we, we assume this the W2 uh, is a square matrix and the beta two have the same size of the uh, number of neurons here. So can we extend to the any arbitrary number of neurons. Yes, so here is, uh, you can just do the um, matrix decomposition and uh, you put the first one, you the W21 equals identity W22 is still, uh, this is equal zero, okay? Equal zero. Then you just, uh, when you do the homotopy, actually you just remove this constraint. You um, track the, um, uh, you do the home topy with respect to lambda. Okay, so this is the idea is the home topy training. Idea is very simple actually. Give a um, procedure is you train the neural network layer by layer. You from uh, zero hidden layer to one hidden layer. You can also train the neural network note by note. You add the one by one note, okay? So this is, uh, uh, once you train this one, you have first the hidden layer. So you can write in your know, neural network like this. Then second step, I can put another hidden layer. It's more complex. You, you first hidden layer, you put another hidden layer. So you can see the network becomes more complex. I can also define this the homotopy T equals, in this case, T equals zero, you have this the neural network is the one hidden layer. T equals one is the, uh, two hidden layers, okay? So this is, a, so I can extend to any, uh, any two layers, if the i is hidden layer and the i plus one is hidden layer, I just track the t from one, uh, from zero to one, I can track any, any uh, solution. So that means I, I can 
always add the solution uh, layer by layer. Then you have your loss function, you have this the parametric problem, you have this the T is your homotopy parameter. So the question is, uh, how can you guarantee this is always, uh, uh, always converging, right? So the first question is even we have the, we 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 don't consider this the neural network. Neural network is too complex, right? So even you have y and y plus one is um, convex. So can we prove this is the, you have the convergence of the homotopy uh, training algorithm? So this is a, if you uh, we consider the convex uh, case, if the t equals one and the t equals uh, t equals zero and the t equals one you have only one solution. So this is the solution path is uh, existing and also unique. So I can prove when you have for uh, when t go, n goes to infinity, so this is the number of iteration and then eventually I can just uh, converge to the solution I want to find, okay, by a uh, stochastic gradient design. Okay, so this is the first uh, uh, convex case. So how about a non-convex case? So I start with the t equals zero is still a convex case. With t equals one, you have two non-convex, uh, it's a non-convex case. You may have bifurcation, for instance. So, but uh, I cannot prove this is a solution is the uni uniqueness of the solution path. But what I can prove is for any given t, the solution is uh, existing, okay? So you ha still have the existence for any given t and you may uh, go here, you may go there, right? So this is a, but uh, I can prove for any given T, I can have this convergence. Okay, so this, uh, I'll give you an idea. So this is one uh, simple example, but it's, uh, it's the cause of a lot of problems. Uh, when you train the deep neural network, so if the, you have a ReLU, so for instance, I use the 10 layers, the hidden layer to train the neural network. And each layer, you only have two neurons. But a very interesting phenomenon happens is uh, it's called the dying ReLU. So that means when you do the evaluation, you have this the ReLU become identical zero. So you, you cannot train everything. You only get the flat, flat line, okay? So this is the um, uh, most of the case, 90% you have this flat line, but uh, only, um, by 4% or 2%, you can get the absolute value of X. So how you uh, train this, uh, I just apply home topic training to do that is uh, very simple. You, you just uh, T from uh, zero, okay? Start with uh, T equals zero, that you have an identity. And the T equals one, you go to ReLU, and then eventually you see the uh, loss is getting um, smaller and smaller by you change the T, and then eventually you can recover this absolute value of uh, uh, X is very, very easily. So why this happens? So actually, if you apply it to home topic to the um, dying ReLU, is uh, how do you uh, deal with the dying ReLU uh, problem is uh, in practice, you just use the leaky ReLU, right? So the leaky ReLU is uh, you, you don't put the um, uh, zero slope, you can put a very small slope, but it's not zero. So homotopy actually is a limit of the liquid value. When this t goes to uh, uh, one, right? t goes to one is the limit. So if the each liquid value is converging, the limit is also converging. So that's why it's, uh, you can see the homotopy can uh, solve this uh, dying ReLU problems. I also try the different uh, um, neural network uh, approximation. So if we approximate y equals sine x, so you can see this is a traditional training. You have this, you uh, stuck at some local minimum, but a homotopy training, you can just uh, change the t and eventually you can get a better approximation. So this is uh, for 1D. If you go to more TD, it's uh, even uh, clearer. So you have different, uh, so this is n equals five, five dimensional. You can see the homotopy in the getting smaller and smaller and the six dimension is also, you can see the training is a very efficient. When you have this the homotopy training, you have a control parameter, you can control that and the, uh, guide you have a better uh, local minimum. We also apply to this uh, um, uh, public data set. So one of them is the VGG model. So we didn't uh, touch anything about the CNN network. We just uh, uh, changed the 
this is a fully connected neural network. So eventually they, they have two uh, fully connected neural networks. So we uh, start with the 10 by 10 by 10, okay? Start with the identity. Then eventually I uh, do the home topic from 10 to uh, 1024 for the first layer. Then I train the neural network first. Then I start the home topic for the second layer. I do the two home topics. So you can see the accuracy with the, is only applied to the, uh, the last uh, um, fully connected neural networks. You can see the accuracy in, improves uh, around 9%. Nine, 9%. Uh, one percent. So this is uh, one of the, um, uh, the advantage of home topic training algorithm. So other one is uh, actually when you apply this uh, home topic training algorithm, because you can have this uh, train the neural network layer by layer and the nose by nose, and then eventually you you know so what's the optimal structure, right? So this is uh, how many layer do I need to add, and how many neural for each layer do I need? So if I don't need, I can just stop. So actually this will give you an idea. You can just uh, uh, tell me so if the um, data is given, so what's the optimal architecture of the neural network? So this is a, when you train your neural network, actually I can tell you what's the, um, this is the uh, optimal architecture. So this is the uh, first part is the home topic training. So then I want to apply this uh, uh, machine learning uh, techniques to learn some uh, the patterns. It's, uh, actually, this is a pattern is the multiple solution of nonlinear PDEs. So this is a pattern formation is a, a very old topic. So I want to use the one example. It's a very famous example from this is a science paper. It's called complex pattern in a simple system. So this is a um, convection diffusion equation. So if you uh, you give any, um, you have a nonlinearity over here, right? So if the uh, initial condition is given, and the row and the kappa is your parameter is fixed, then you have many patterns. In this paper, they can they just explore there are many patterns over here. But this pattern is uh, is um, interesting. They they just uh, do the very simple simulation. A random have some initial condition, then do the forward Euler for time t discretization and the finite difference for the spatial dis discretization. They can find many patterns, but this pattern is only time dependent pattern. So this is not a real pattern. It's a real pattern that means when t goes to infinity, you have steady state. Okay, so then many people study this steady state. So what's the steady state pattern? So the first uh, the, the study is uh, let's start in a non uh, trivial steady state. Okay, trivial steady state means the u is a constant across the um, uh, domain. So you only solve the right hand side. You have a quadratic uh, equation or a cubic equation. You can solve it. Then how about non trivial? Non trivial we introduce this spatial discretization as well. So what they are doing, they just perturb on the trivial steady state. So give a random perturbation. So uh, then I run this either Newton's method or you run the time dependent system and then eventually you find the steady state. Or there is a, um, how many people are doing this way. All the uh, more precisely they can do this uh, linear, uh, linear uh, uh, linearization around this uh, trivial steady state and the, uh, write down the exact formula then solve the linear uh, differential equation. Okay, so there is also a uh, lot of, uh, we use the home topy method to solve this uh, uh, nonlinear system. So this is after discretized system, you have a, a, a polynomial system, but a very sparse polynomial system, very large. So I just use a, a couple of some home topy method with the, uh, different numerical PDEs to solve it. But the problem is uh, computation is very expensive. So if the, you compute 1D or 2D, maybe that's okay. It's a 3D, it's impossible to compute. It's, um, you, this, uh, you need to track out lots of solution paths. So then I just want to see, is that possible? We can use a machine learning to solve it. So this is a, a, general, a general system. You see, you want to solve the UT equals uh, Laplace equation. I consider the semi the linear system. This, this is a linear, but a nonlinearity. I'll use the right hand side. Okay. 
So after discretization, you have this uh, a polynomial system. If the FUP is a polynomial term, so then you 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 do the discretization. You can uh, use the home topic to solve it, but uh, um, computation is very uh, expensive. So then we just uh, uh, look at this uh, uh, steady state again. Okay? okay, so because I look at the steady state, ut goes to zero. Uh, then you have this uh, nonlinear Laplace equation. Okay, how you solve this one? You you uh, is eventually you can write into a energetic formulation. So this is a, you have you want to minimize this formula. Then once you minimize this formula, you can have this uh, um, solution, right? So this is a, this is a, most of people are doing this. Is if you have a neural network, you can treat the neural network as a discretization as a, on the space. Okay, so you just plug in this the neural network into the energy uh, functional. Then you want to minimize this one. You just use a gradient descent or whatever you solve it. Then you can find the many uh, uh, different patterns. But uh, the problem is if you solve this uh, optimization problem, there are many local minima. So you may uh, stuck at one local minimum and you never come back. Okay, so this is a, you you cannot find the solution very easily because this is a, eventually you have this minimization problem. You put the uh, boundary condition over here. It's not trivial. Okay, it's not an easy task to solve it. Okay, so because uh, um, I want to use some uh, uh, tools from numerical algebraic geometry, so I just uh, want to keep the equation. Okay, so let's uh, you do the discretization plug the neural network into this system directly, okay? What I can have? So I have this uh, uh, equation is self equals zero and the boundary condition equals zero, okay? So I, I, I want to solve this f theta equals zero, okay? But uh, how do you solve it? So most of the case you use a collocation method. So the collocation method, that means if you, how many variable you have? If you have n plus m variable, I collocate the n plus m points, right? So this is the points that should be true for any x. I just run them, choose the x i and the x j in the domain on the boundary, then I can just solve a square system. But the collocation method is not working for this system. Okay, so let me give you a very simple example. If I solve the linear system, I have the only one hidden layer or I just uh, one hidden layer, one neural, okay? So I have four variables. Then I should have, you already have two boundary condition. I put another uh, two collocation point that should work. So I, I have this the four by four system. You have four variables and the four, uh, four equations. First of all, I want to simplify, okay? I use the last two equations solve for B2 and uh, w, uh, W2. Then eventually I can simplify into a two uh, equation, the two, two variables. You solve this one equals zero. So what's the collocation point you should match? You should have match two collocation points. So here is, uh, I give you a different uh, idea. So you choose a different collocation point. For instance, if you have this collocation point, you have a real solution is your new uh, uh, PDE solution is a grid points. And the, but you have, have another one is a fixed solution, okay? If you put plot, plot this fixed solution, you, you have this one. It's not the, it's far away from your real solution. And the similarly, if you have a different collocation point, you have real solution, real PDE solution, you also have fixed solution. So you have this, uh, this one, okay? So this, uh, that means you give the collocation point is you may converge to a fixed solution, but uh, some uh, collocation point you may converge to the uh, real solution. How do you deal with this, right? So that means the collocation method is not working. How do you deal with this when it's uh, uh, simple? It's, uh, you need a sample as many as possible. So that means you have n variable, but your collocation points should be much larger than this uh, uh, number of variables. So eventually you have this uh, over-determined system. So this is a nonlinear system. You have F1 to Fn. So this is N is the number of uh, equation and M is the number of variables. You have N is uh, much larger than M, okay? How do you solve this? So this is, uh, um, you, in numerical algebraic geometry, uh, there is a, a way to solve it is called, a, you, you just random choose a matrix 
m times n. Okay, you make this system, you have a long system, you make it square, then you can still solve it. But the problem is if you solve this one, you have evaluation become a, is a, very, is a big problem because this is a f each f, f r is complex, then you just multiply this n could be very large, then you have become this is each of the components is very long. Okay, it's hard to, uh, hard to evaluate. So how, how we solve this one, we just come up with a, a idea is simple. It's a, we just random choose, okay. Each new, we still apply Newton method, but each, uh, each, each step we random choose a square system, okay. Each, uh, each time we still choose the M, M equations, okay. But uh, each iteration, okay. Eventually you will see this is a random, um, Newton's method converge, but this is, we still have this quadratic convergence, but you have this randomness, this is all the quadratic convergence under is the probability mean, okay? So this is, I can prove the expectation is still follow the um, uh, quadratic convergence. So let me I'll give you one simple example. This is what we uh, test before you have a simple um, example. So I have different uh, number of nodes and the number of variables. So you, you just uh, come up with uh, many sample points. It's always much larger than this number of variable. So you can see this uh, numerical error is can, can get very, very, very small by using the um, uh, random Newton's method. And uh, also if you have multiple solutions, okay? So you have multiple solutions, then you just, uh, you, you start with the one initial guess, okay? Then you can just uh, run the uh, random uh, Newton method many times. Eventually you can compute the multiple solutions. So this is one of them. You have analytical solution. Eventually you can see that the error is quite small. So another one is uh, uh, if you go to the uh, singular value, so you have progress equation, you have discontinuity. Uh, continuity. So then you, how you compute this one, I can still apply this uh, linear viscosity and uh, apply homotopy. And eventually you, each time you apply random Newton and you can see the homotopy tracking for the viscosity, you can find the a real solution, okay? Real solution. So this uh, uh, you have this continuity, but each time you don't use the homotopy, you just use the random initial guess. You cannot find the uh, uh, entropy solution, but each time you still converge. Okay. Um, so the other one is the high dimensional uh, solution because of the uh, neural network and machine learning is. Uh, you don't have curse of dimensionality, so I just uh, go to a very high dimensional. Uh, solution for n equals uh, six. So I just uh, have a number of um, variables. So you can see this is a pretty, uh, quite small. So uh, it's, um, it's, uh, I think let me uh, finish uh, this the last part. So then I uh, go back to this the pattern formation is the first example I show you. I just give the different initial, initial guess and you run the random Newton, you can learn different steady state. So it's, uh, you, you don't need compute each of them. You just have a random guess, okay? Then you eventually, if this is a steady state, you will learn, okay? So let me uh, summarize this. Uh, random Newton method actually give you a way to, uh, for neural network discretization to learn multiple solution. So in the future, I want to also couple with the homotopy training eventually, because when you solve a PDE, you don't know what's the, optimal architecture of the neural network, you just test, right? So this, uh, if you couple with a homotopy training, they can tell you what's the optimal uh, structure for the different type of uh, nonlinear PD you solve. Okay, thank you. Very good, thank you, Wenrui. Uh, so <clears throat> I don't see any questions in the chat, so we'll open it up. If someone wants to turn their microphone on and, and ask questions, that's great. Okay. <clears throat> maybe on one question if possible sure i mean this is a bit audacious but maybe like what you described could you actually try to okay so you try to fully connect it i suppose you can do it with uh, convoluted and uh, recursive also but uh, right 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 so but, uh, yes but the question is actually could you actually try to 
modify the notion of a neural network here and try not a, a typical linear map bias and activation function, but more like a, a quadratic map. And then oh, I, I see, I see. That people uh, don't know how to do, I think. Yeah, it's a good idea. So, but uh, actually, let me go back to this uh, homotopy. I, uh, it's only for the first step I started with the linear map, right? So after that is actually homotopy is start with, uh, for instance, is the i equals zero, you start with the linear mapping, you go to the i equals one. Then if you want to train the two neuron, uh, two hidden layers, you are start with the one hidden layer, i equals one to i equals two. Yes, yes, but no, the question goes somewhat beyond this. I mean, like well, in the formula that's written above, for example, like you could even modify what it means to be a neural network. Like a neural network uh, with quadratic functions of features. Oh, you, you mean quadratic uh, activation function, right? Before the activation function. Oh, I see, I see. Because neurons are like this sort of structure and uh, like from what I heard, I mean, I haven't tried it myself, that, but I haven't heard people converge those things. So I don't know. Oh, I, I didn't try that, but that's a good idea. Yeah, I can try that and see what's happening. And the second question, but I guess uh, you somewhat maybe like the, the, there is, like could you say there is some overfitting happening uh, or or even less overfitting happening with your training algorithm? Have you tried to understand to which extent it is more efficient when you try to test it against such things like as overfitting or adversarial attacks? Oh, no, no, this is a home topic. I I don't know. Is that's a good a good question? Right now we are do some uh, theoretical analysis on the overfitting. Because uh, when you do this uh, home topic training, you only have this uh, uh, control on the training uh, set, right? You don't have any control on the test data set. So, but I have a feeling because this is that you train the neural network layer by layer, you can couple with the, um, this uh, universal approximation theory, eventually you can uh, get a better, better fitting, right? Better fitting, then you have a good generalization accuracy. But, um, Based on algorithm is not, uh, not clear because you only have control of the um, training data set. Well, thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's, uh, let's thank Wenrui again. Yes, thank you.